Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem from the book 101 Problems in Algebra from the training of the USA IMO team. So, we have this exponential equation x to the power a to the power x equals a to the power x to the power a. And a is a number, a given number between 0 and 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to be taking a look at the graph of this function for a particular value of x that I picked from this interval 0 to 1 to show you what the graph looks like. And obviously you can kind of play with Desmos, set up the boundaries, make sure your a is between 0 and 1, and then you can just play it and see how the graph works. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and try to solve this problem. First of all, I'm pretty sure most of you, maybe all of you, have noticed an obvious solution to this equation, which we're going to name a little later. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, a must be between 0 and 1. That's important. That's a given condition. Under those conditions, let's go ahead and log both sides with base A. We can definitely use any base, but using base A here seems to be a good way to do it. So, let's go ahead and rewrite our equation. We have x to the power, oops, that's not the color that I was looking for. Probably need something lighter. How about this? Okay. x to the power a to the power x equals a to the power x to the power a. And again, a is between 0 and 1, and we're going to solve for x values. Great. Let's go ahead and log both sides. I'm going to use base a like this, and base a like this. I'm going to use parentheses because some folks are confused when parentheses aren't used, even though this would be pretty clear, in my opinion. But anyways, I could be wrong. But properties of logs give gives us a lot of good things, including this one. When you have the power of something being logged, you can go ahead and move it to the front. So the power property allows us to move the a to the x to the front, and we end up getting log x with base a. And then the right-hand side, same thing, x to the power a, you can bring it down, x to the a times log a with base a. But that's one, so you don't have to worry about it. Great, now we have the following, a to the x times log x base a equals x to the power a. One of the things you should always remember, there is a reason why that condition was given, is that a is between 0 and 1. Now, what does, why does that matter, right? I mean, if a is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a fraction like 1 half or 1 third or 0 0.7, whatever. That actually makes a difference when it comes to logs and exponential functions. Because there's basically two types of exponential functions, if you, if you think about it. Uh, when a is greater than 1, then you get a graph like this. And when a is less than 1, you get a graph like this. So if a is greater than 1, then your graph is going to be increasing. Make sense? So we're basically looking at this type of equation here, which means a to the power x is decreasing when a is between 0 and 1. Make sense? Okay, what about the log function? Well, the log function is pretty much the same way, right? They're inverses. So if you think about it, when you have a function like this, its inverse is going to be symmetrical, and it's going to look like this. And when you have a function like this, its inverse has to be what? Uh, symmetrical to this. And if you think about it, that is going to be a decreasing function as well. Make sense? Okay, so it's going to look something like this, if you really think about it. Okay, because they have to be symmetrical. So we have a decreasing function, and log a x with base a is also a decreasing function. So you have two decreasing, fun <laughs> two decreasing functions. Their product is also going to be decreasing, obviously, right? I mean, when you think about it, Decreasing means the first derivative is negative. If you take the derivative of the product, like f times g, remember the product rule, f prime g plus g prime f, then you're going to get something decreasing as well. Anyways, that's another story. Now let's go ahead and look at the right-hand side. What happens to x to the power a? Well, now if x to the power a is 
Is that going to be a decreasing function too? Think about it. A is between 0 and 1. So you have something like x to the power 1 half. What does that look like? Well, x to the power 1 half is like square root of x. So square root of x looks like this. Yes, it is going to be concave down, not like x squared, but it's still going to be increasing. Why? Because if x is greater than 0, which needs to happen, by the way, then we're basically looking at larger and larger values of the square root. Because if you get a larger number, its square root is going to be larger. Make sense? So in that case, this is going to be an increasing function. What is that supposed to mean? I have a decreasing function on the left, increasing function on the right. So one of the graphs is going like this, the other one is going like this. Oh, exactly not like that, but you get the idea. They have to intersect at a single point. So here's the million dollar question. Where does that come from? Go away. Okay, so we need to kind of ch guess and check here. So let's go back to the original problem. And I want you to notice one thing here. We said that an obvious solution hopefully uh, came up to you. And that would be, look at this. If x is equal to a, then x is going to equal a, and x is going to equal everything will work. So in other words, a to the power, a to the power a is the same as a to the power, a to the power a. Therefore, x equals a is a solution of this equation. I'm not saying that's the only solution. I'm just saying it's a solution. But I'm also saying it is the only solution because of this. We have a decreasing function on the left and an increasing function on the right, and they can only intersect at a single, single point. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so the graph that I made for you includes the value a equals 0 0.7, and as you can see, if you do this on Desmos, you are able to switch back and forth be different, be between different values. Obviously, I didn't pick at the right interval, but I stopped it at 0 0.7, or you can just type it. But you can do it such that uh, it's always going between 0 and 1. Make sense? Well, 1 is not there, obviously. Okay? So for that particular value, notice that x to the power a to the power x is going to be increasing and a to the power x to the power a is decreasing. These are not the logarithmic versions, but hopefully you get the idea. By the way, we can also talk about this real quick. Why is this an increasing function and why is this a decreasing function, right? <laughs> why is the thing? The first one is obviously increasing because it's kind of like x to the power something, which is always going to be increasing regardless of the value of the exponent. Because remember, in our case, when we looked at x to the a, it was always increasing, even if it's uh, a is between 0 and 1. So here we're, we're good. But with the decreasing case, you have like a to the power x to the a. So you're kind of looking at something like this. And when a is between 0 and 1, you're going to get something smaller and that is going to be decreasing, at least for these values of x. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.